at that. Okay. Managing your career is probably one. Uh, I'm not certain. What's the oh, icon here we go. mean? Okay. The icon? You're talking about what icon? In front of the Sarah, S-A-H-R-A, there's like a little circle. Uh, that's just to denote what type of event it is. Oh, okay. So we'll click this guy, Managing Your Career. So he does have registrations. And if you're coming to uh, pay, for, <clears throat> excuse me, pay for somebody that's already registered but hasn't paid, you would come to the event, click on uh, Attendees. Now this is for someone you said who has registered but didn't pay? Oh, but this guy doesn't have any registrations. Yes. Actually, let's go back to the one that you had mentioned, the 16th, because that even though it's in the past, it would have uh, registrations. So you can click on attendees to see who's registered. And you can look at the balance to see if anybody has a balance right now. Everybody has a balance of zero, so that means they've, they've all paid. If you want to pay for somebody who hasn't paid, you would click on Manage Event and go down here to where it says Search Reg, and that stands for Search Registrations. This is going to show you everybody who's registered for the event, um, including people that began the registration but didn't complete it, and people that have canceled. So, for example, this guy started registering but didn't finish. Um, all of these guys, okay, this guy is an example of somebody who registered but didn't pay. So as the admin, you can come back, find the registration, you can either click pay online now, that's going to take you straight to the merchant account to pay with a credit card, or you can, question? Yeah, uh -huh. um, our old system, we had, we had a big problem of people registering and not showing up. Mm -hmm. And if they don't show up, it's really hard to collect from them because they don't want to pay for something they didn't go to. Mm -hmm. But we, but we, if they registered, we're counting them for headcount for the lunch, and so we incur a cost. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing as a board in the past is, if they did not pay, they weren't. It didn't count them as registered, mm -hmm. and um, so they they were you know they kind of went into a incomplete status more or less. And okay. in our old system, we had it set up where we only accepted payments online. We didn't accept offline payments mm -hmm. um, except on an um, exception basis. So if someone really, really, really needed to pay offline, they could contact us for special um, permission to do that. Okay. For intendancy on this list, the attendees list is going to show you the total paid registrants is going to be displayed first of all. And right now it's saying that's 16. If you want to see who's in not paid status, you can scroll down and expand the report, and that'll show you uh, this guy who has the balance. Okay, so the ones with the yellow asterisks, are those were those, freebies? Yeah, those look like they had been admin overridden. So they will count, even though nothing was paid, they will, they're shown as paid. Yes. Okay. So going back to this guy who shows as having a balance, so if you click, click this link, it'll take you to the credit card um, merchant account online payments so you can pay with a credit card. Or um, as an admin, you can click the link to the invoice. Now if you do the pay online now, mm -hmm. and it, does it fill out Dawn's information because it's her registration, or is it going to fill out my information because I'm the one logged in? I th well, let's take a look. Let me go back. Oh, what's happening? I believe it should fill out her information. Um, oh, what's going on? It looks like her information's on the screen. Mm -hmm.
Okay, here we go. So if we click the pan line, uh, Uh, okay. Do you want me to go forward to see what it says? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes or no? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to choose credit card. Card number. Okay, I have to enter a card number. So, yeah, so that wouldn't... We Let me get a card. I think the information I was looking for was on the screen before, where it had her information pre-populated. Okay. Um, oh, this guy's still spinning. What's going on? Yeah. So, we would get to this page if we clicked on the link for invoice and as an admin on this page you have more options you have the option to pay online again it's going to take you to the credit card screen you have the option as an admin to receive or verify payment and then you also have here at the bottom you have the option as an admin to adjust the invoice so you would use the receive uh, verify payment to mark the invoice as paid and you denote what type of payment cash, check, credit card, um, in the amount, and then you would note whether or not it was verified um, or just received. And you can also send an email directly to the specific user, letting them know uh, that their payment was received. And this stuff yeah. here shows the um, invoice attempts, and this is this one created just by me just now because I clicked on the link and then I didn't complete it, so it's looking as in another abandon. The okay. other option, which was the admin adjust invoice, this would be uh, where you would go to comp someone. Mm -hmm. um, you would adjust the invoice, change the amount, hit submit, and then you would still have to go through the payment. Uh, now in this, where it says adjust amount plus or minus, do you, if I want, if it's a $40 invoice and I want to give it to, give it to them for 25 then I would do put in a negative 15 that's correct is that correct mm -hmm. okay that is correct uh, and that is really that for applying payments to unpaid calendar event registrations if you have unpaid um, you mentioned earlier that you thought memberships were through catalogs. Um, are you guys not using the memberships module? We may be using membership module. I don't know. I know. Well, my, actually, it is a separate link. Okay. Or a separate tab. Okay. I'm not involved with setting those things up, so I don't. I don't know how it was set up. I know it's not a calendar event because yeah. it's not a. It's not linked to a specific date. Correct. So you can see where it says join ASCD Sacramento as yep. the second tab. That's where you go okay, yeah, to this, get a new yeah. membership. Okay. Now, I'm not sure yeah. how renewals are being handled. Okay, who? I know we were having some issue with renewals not going out. Those were the renewal notices, but I know that that's been resolved. And I think we were working with Carol. Is she responsible for the memberships portion? Not exactly. She's our president. We okay. have someone who does memberships, okay. but she travels quite a bit, and I okay. think she's been struggling with learning the new tendency program as well. Okay. Um, it's much harder to self-teach yourself something than if someone shows you. I understand. Especially when you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. We actually do have a training video on the memberships um, that may be useful. She may already have attended the, the webinar. Okay. Um, definitely that's something to to look to do as far as the memberships is concerned for folks to join new they would have to fill out that membership application and submit their payment um, online via credit card if you guys accept other forms of payment 
Um, actually, I'm not going to look at it this way because it's going to give me the admin view. And it's not going to be true to what the user would see. If you guys accept other kinds of payments, for example, check or um, a request to send an invoice, then they'll still be able to apply. Their membership will be in pending status until admin uh, approves the notice. Oh, wait, I'm logged in here as well. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, all those admin fields. Okay, so the only payment method you accept on is credit card, so that's fine. They'll just choose their type and they'll make the credit card payment. As an admin, if you are adding folks, you can fill out this form. You can choose whatever payment method you want, and you'll see the whole list here because you're logged in as admin. If the person is already a user on the account, I mean, on the in the database, I click here to search the users. If they're already a user, um, this is my record. It has the blue box around it because I'm the owner of the record. I created that record. As an admin, I can come here, click on more options, and click this link that says add a membership. And in the list that you sent me last week, I, I included the link to the help file that explains how to do this. So that'll take me to the membership application. It's going to be populated with all my stuff. You have to fill out the rest of the stuff, choose this, um, and then fill out so everything else and then submit. Oh, directory listing, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, you had a question? The directory listing is coming up with all of that stuff as required. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, especially like facts. Why would that be required? The information for the directory listing as far as what fields are required or what is not required that is customizable through the membership application so whomever uh, I guess did the membership application decided that they wanted these fields required you can this is you something, can well this is them. something that uh, well th uh, this is the I don't think we can require anyone to be listed in the membership directory if they don't want to be. Okay. So, uh, I'm a little... Anyway, that's not for you. That's for the board, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, that's how you would convert a site user to a member. If somebody is... Say, for example, well, it wouldn't be an example because you guys are only accepting credit card payment. Um, if there was a case where somebody had applied for membership and they, their payment hadn't gone through, um, you can always come back to their membership record. Um, if they were in a state where their payment hadn't gone through, their membership would be in pending status, like right here it says active. Um, and if it said pending, you could click on it, and that would essentially take you to edit the uh, membership application. And you would just scroll down to the payment section, and you would apply the payment, um, and the payment method options would appear, and then you would hit submit. We also have a report under reports for pending memberships. That would show who's pending. Who's this guy? Why is he pending? So let's take a look at his application. And we can look at his invoice. Seems like he applied, but then he didn't complete his payment. So on his invoice, you could either click Pay Online take you to the credit card place, or you could admin receive or verify payment, which is the same as um, 
the calendar event stuff that we looked at earlier, specify the amount, the payment method, you could send the email, uh, and that would update his membership. I'm sorry, what, what were we doing here? Looking at somebody who has a pending membership and how to pay, how to apply a payment to a pending membership. What about if we want, if we have, we don't have a payment, but we have a pending membership and we want to reach out to that person to find out if they intend to pay or are wanting to pay offline or something like that? How would we do that? Uh, let's go back. Here we go. So again, you could go to the pending membership list and you would, it would bring up all the people that had a pending membership. You could click, the guy's email is here, you could click on his record and that'll bring up his information, his phone number is here, and um, you can contact him directly, or her, I'm not sure if this is a man or a woman. Um, what other okay. questions? Okay. Um, second item, what other, any other unpaid um, items that you can think of that you want to take a look at how to do? If I don't have any user information and I have a payment for someone who attended who's mm -hmm. not a member and not a user of the site, what mm -hmm. steps do I have to go through? That it attended an event? Uh-huh. Okay. So the event is in the past? Typically, yes. Okay. So we'll use this guy as an example. We can go here. As an admin, you can uh, click on Admin Late Registration. You would have to, f if you were logged in, it would populate with your information. Uh, you would fill out mm -hmm. that person's information and step through the process as though you were registering. And uh, that person would then be added to the database as a user. Um, and from then on out, you would be able to use that record, um, or they would have a record. They, they won't have a login. Um, if you need them to have a login, we can take a look at how you would upgrade their account to have a login. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and step through that process. Is this going to mess up your accounting stuff if I add myself and and mark it as paid? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where's gonna, that money? I'm not going to do that. Then. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, hold on. Oops. So basically, if if someone isn't a user, I would just fill out the information required to register them, and that creates a user, but they wouldn't have a login. They wouldn't have a login because um, the, the system would assign them a login, but they wouldn't know what it was. Yeah. Okay. And if you wanted to upgrade them or let them know, okay. So since we filled out the um, calendar event registration, it added me as a, as a user. So K user Gale, and it gave me a record. This X means that I don't have capability to log in. Um, so if you needed to give them that capability, you would have to click the pencil to edit and scroll down and change this to where it says not interactive to interactive change that and then you would scroll down to the admin section and click email password and what that does is it sends an email to the person with a link for them to reset your password. Tenancy is automatically going to generate a username and password um, for any user that's added to the system. Okay. Um. When you were showing me before, I think that was for an actual member where you could 
um, you had a more options button that you when you clicked on you could register them for an event. Uh, that was when I was looking at users. Hold on. So this would be the more options, um, and this is where you would go. No, to so wait a minute. I don't know where you are, how you got there. I clicked on tendency, and I clicked on search mm -hmm. to search the user database. Okay. And this is the user database. It's going to have both users and members. The members are going to be denoted with the yellow background there they have the little icon looks like a man in the doorway and then they have the red member ID okay um, members are a subset of users so they're always going to appear in the user uh, database as well so okay. this is the more options button that you were mentioning mm -hmm. um, and this would be the link add a member add membership to convert a site user to a member it's going to take you straight to the the membership application Okay. Can you, if you know you have somebody who is either a user or a member and you want to register them for an event because mm -hmm. they came to your event, you don't want to have to type all their information again, yep. is there a way of going through the, you know, search user or search member, find them, and then register them for a particular event? Yes. Uh, before we get to that, um, the user that we just added, this guy, we clicked on the password email. This is my Shipple test Gmail account. So this would be the email that that person would get. Oh no, that's not the email at all. Where did it go? Oh, did I get it? Oh, I haven't gotten it yet. We'll look at that later. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> all right, so this guy, um, let's find me again. All right, so let's use this test user. We want to register this guy for an event, uh, but we don't want to have to enter all his information because it's tedious. So let's go find an event. And instructions on how to do this also in the email that I sent you. So let's go this guy. We go to the event and we look for the number. Uh, and this event is number nine. So then we go down to the bottom of that user's record and we look for speed registration and then we enter the event ID and then we click register oh and then it adds all the person's info um, that's from their user record and then you just step through the process again it'll generate the invoice and all that stuff when it says membership will be verified is that an automated process or how is that happening uh, in order for membership to be verified, you have to be logged in uh, to Tendency because what Tendency does is it looks to see if you have a member ID in your user record. And if you do, then it says that you're eligible for member benefits such as member pricing. So if I try to choose member, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to tell me that I'm not a member though because I'm logged in as, yeah, so it says I'm not a member. So I have to choose another option. I'm going to tell them to log in so they can be detected as a member. They're mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, and then so choose not member and then step through the rest of the process to register for the event. And the same thing uh, for a member. Actually go back one more. One more. So like this guy here. He, he or she is a member, would just go, go to their user record and then enter the event ID. And then it would, it would populate with their info. What other questions? And I got that email for the password. All right, so forgotten password. So that person would get an email that looks like this. An administrator has sent you a link to reset your password. Please use the link. And so then they would click this link.
and they would go to the site and they would be able to reset their password that way and then they would be able to log into the site. Um, administrators are not able to look up passwords. The f even us folks at Shipple, we can't look up passwords. We can only uh, reset them. Reset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or as an admin, oops, as an admin, you can reset someone's password by editing their user record and going down here to change the password and then click change password and that resets it, but we can't look up passwords. On the report that when I run the report for all financials, it's only going to give me actual um, payment instead of process, not um, you know any credit cards that didn't go through for some reason, correct? I believe that is correct, yes. Okay, so is there a report for failed transactions? I believe there is a report. There's this report for abandoned payments and invoices. Uh, if they go, so if they, well, for example, when the I first, when we first got the site up and running, mm -hmm. there was some issue on the PayPal site. So I went through and registered for a event, and it looked like it. It looked like it worked, and it showed a zero balance due and all of that, but then somewhere I got an email or a warning that popped up. Something came up that told me that it didn't, it didn't go through. And uh, so I was trying to figure out, well, why is, it, why is this thing telling me I'm paid, but I'm getting this other notice that's saying my payment didn't go through. Can you send and me? And so I need to be really crystal clear on the data that I'm getting. Mm -hmm as to the validity. Yeah. Can you send me an example of what you mean? I don't think so. I don't think I saved anything. I mean, okay. I can look through my emails, but I don't yeah. even remember now because this was, you know, end of April. Mm -hmm. If it was an email or if it was just a pop-up mm -hmm. on the screen. You shouldn't be getting any pop-ups, um, especially through Tendency. So I'm not sure. Without actually looking at what you looked at, it's hard for me to say why you you got that. Um, has it happened since? No. Have you, have you had any it reports? It hasn't happened since. Okay. Um, no, I haven't heard of anything since we got that resolved through PayPal. Okay. But I'm just curious as to whether, you know, should it happen again where a card doesn't go through for some reason, mm -hmm. um, you know, that it isn't going to come back and show, show as paid when we didn't actually get the money. It shouldn't. What happens is when the person clicks on the payment option, they get, they go to, they'll go to PayPal, they'll enter all their information, they'll submit their payment, and then PayPal will send like a signal back to the website that says the payment was approved or not approved and then it updates on the website so there are certain scenarios that could cause that signal not to be received like if the person clicks away or um, their internet connection for whatever reason gets interrupted at that very moment I mean these are very rare instances uh, but I haven't had any reports from other of other clients that are using PayPal that have had that type of experience. So um, it's hard to say whether or not something like that would happen again now that everything's configured properly. Okay. So in order to get details on each of these, you actually have to click on the invoice ID to see who it was? Or? You would. Um, I don't believe that there's an export. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to go one by one to see.
this guy. And like these reasons, this is coming from PayPal. So an error with this transaction. A valid state and billing address. Probably because they didn't like the lower case. Huh. Why doesn't it do a drop down? I mean, why doesn't it, you know, you, most of those things have a drop down when it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That, that would be a PayPal question. Um, they may not have it configured like that on their site. What other questions do you have? Well, let's see. What adjust amounts do we need in? Okay, shows that choose these members from the cover user to renew membership. How are memberships being renewed now? There's a couple different ways. Go ahead. We occasionally I think we have our membership, well, in the past, I don't know how it's set up on tenancy, but mm -hmm. in the past it was always set up that they had a grace period, and I don't recall exactly whether it was 30 days, 60 days, or exactly what it was, but um, if we sent out a renewal notice and say somebody was expiring June 1st, mm -hmm. um, they would have at least through the whole month of June to pay and not consider... You know, they would still get the renewal rate. Mm -hmm. And then whenever the grace period was up, um, they had to register as a new user, which is $20 more. Mm -hmm. um, but occasionally we would get a situation where someone failed to get the renewal or they thought they had paid, but, the, you know, their, the check didn't come through or, or something happened, so we make an exception. Mm -hmm. And um, is there a way to send it through on the renewal instead of making them register new and adjusting the price so that their um, membership will show the history. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have it set up like that because one of the things that we found was with the membership notices um, that they were set up to go to a renewal only membership type which um, was why they didn't go out because there weren't people that met that criteria. So um, let's take a look. Where see when I go into um, membership? Yeah. I guess I'm. I was trying to figure out because <laughs> what I used to do is go into the event and apply the payment under our old system. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to figure out if I get a renewal and the. And the mail. I don't know what to do with it. How do I process a renewal? Okay. So um, if you're getting a membership renewal, you would go into the memberships module. So from the tenancy console, you'll click on memberships. Um, you can look for that specific person by clicking on search. Um, uh, let's just pretend it's this guy. So, well, actually, let's pretend it's this guy because she's actually in a renewal state. So to renew as an admin, to renew this person, you could click on the renew link. And that's just going to mm -hmm. take you to the form filled out with all the person's information. And then you just specify the payment. Have the, have the option to say you're done, complete the renewal. Or if you choose this option, I still need to make changes, it's going to bring up the full form where you can edit all the other fields um, that you have on the membership app. Um, this is okay. as a, this is as an admin. Um, I'm not going to submit that because we're not going to renew that person. There are some people. So all the people on this list are actual members or pe or are pending renewal. Correct? Yes, we're looking at the memberships right now. So the only people that will appear in this area are members. Um, okay. There are some people, you were talking earlier just now about the grace period and the renewal mm -hmm. period, and we have that as well here. Um, and for this site, the grace period is set to 15 days. And in tendency, what that allows you is after your membership expires, you have 15 days where you still continue to have membership privileges. And then once those 15 days are over, you no longer have the privileges. 
um, such as mem member only pricing and whatnot. Now that's different from the renewal period, um, which is renewal period ends. Once the renewal period ends, they're not able to renew themselves. They'll have to start again from scratch, or an admin can renew them. So if they were past the renewal period, um, so let me uh, let me see if I understand this. We can have it set so that their member privileges expire after 15 days, mm -hmm. but if we wanted to give them 30 days or 60 days to mm -hmm. actually be able to do their renewal, we could mm -hmm. do that. Correct. And if any time after the 15 days and before the 60 days, if they try to do transactions, that would process as a non-member. Correct. Oh, good. So if they were past the renewal period, as an admin, you would come in here and there would be a different link here. Uh, it would essentially say admin. Um, if they, oh, here it is. Oh, oh, this, like this guy. You're not currently within the renewal period. You can't renew online. Um, please contact the admin. And because I'm logged in as an admin, then I see this link right here, admin renew. So as an admin, I can renew them. Um, but they wouldn't be able to renew themselves. And then the other setting is the renewal period start. So right now it's set to 60 days. So they have the option 60 days prior to their membership actually expiring, they can come in and renew themselves. And that's when they start getting notifications. The notifications, uh, let's see, oops. The notifications that are on this system right now, 30 days, uh, 30 days before, 14 days before, 7 days before, 30 days after. Um, 30 days after kind of doesn't make sense because you're, makes you're, big. yeah, the renewal period ends at 15, so maybe we'll, maybe want to change that. Um, yeah, let's, can we change it now? Because as long as w they won't get member benefits after 15 days, mm -hmm. I think we should give them up to 60 to be able to renew. All right. That's done. Um, and so what else? Oh, the membership types. So y'all had different types. So like a new membership, $80, and then the renewal, uh, $20 off. So when they come back to renew they'll see the renewal type and they'll have the option to choose it um, what's this special right now? she I'm not Carol set that up and I don't know if she wasn't aware that we could just do an adjustment for individuals but we had some people who expired because mm -hmm. the renewal notices weren't going out and mm -hmm. she wanted to be able to allow them but I think that by adjusting the renewal period, that can resolve that problem, and she probably didn't know that. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll send her an email and let her know. Yeah, because now that we changed the renewal, this guy is, he's able to renew, whereas before he had to contact the admin. Yeah. So I'll let, I'll let her know that we did that, and, and if we need to extend it a little longer, we could you know, yeah. make it 90 days or something and then change it back after mm -hmm. these people get processed. Yep. What else? I'm actually... Um, some of the stuff that I've struggled with, I think, is because of the way it's been set up. Uh, under the admin site for what's required and I've had situations where I received monies and a form that may or may not have been completely filled out okay. and is missing information okay and I was trying to you know do a membership processing and I didn't have a phone number which was a required field or mm. something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. so what what to do in that situation yeah, um, and, you know, the, some of the things that aren't clear to me is when I fill out all this information, like if I ended up putting in some fictitious information or something like that just to make it process, mm -hmm. um, what go, you know, I'm not certain what's happening with all of this information, what's being published to, what's visible, I should say, to other users or mm -hmm. other members. Mm-hmm. 
um, what goes into the directory, what doesn't, how does the user control that. Oh, well, let's take so a those look. are some other things that I'm not sure about. And okay. when, if I'm registering someone as a, as a admin and I'm doing the work, I don't really know what they want to show in the directory and what they don't. Right. Well, I'm going to give myself a password here for this user that we created just now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to log in as that user and so we can see what that guy sees is happening. Um, because a lot of times as, as you're, when you're logged in as an admin, you see way more than the regular user a member would see. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at that. But before we do, um, do you want members to have the option to have this $60 special renewal? membership type on the membership application because right now it's it's open to the public they can choose this sixty dollars I don't I yeah I I don't know I don't I wouldn't think so but I need to find out I know that okay. Carol Carol's intention was to remove it as soon as we got these folks that were pending mm. process through okay well I'll let you work that out with Carol um, just I just noticed that and I didn't know if that was supposed to be there or not. But let's go ahead and log in as uh, user and see what the user sees. Okay, logged in as user. So uh, if I wanted to look at other users, I would go click on search to see the other users. And right now, the site's only set up to allow me to see me. So I can't see anybody else. If I want to go look at members, I would click on memberships and click on search. And right now, it doesn't allow me to see any other members at all. Um, I can, as an admin, I can go into this user record and what tendency looks for to determine whether or not you're a member is if you have a member ID in your user record. So I'm, I'm going to um, just add that to trick the system into thinking that I'm a member and go back over here and see if it gives me uh, different permissions. No, not so much. Hold on. And so now as a member, it's allowing me to view other members. But before, when I was a user, it said, no, I can't see anyone. Hmm, interesting. So is, don't we have a link under you, visitor services or something like that for membership directory? Somewhere there's a link for membership directory. Uh, let's take a look. Where am I going? I think it's on the green bar. Member services. Yeah, it's not there. Visitor services. Let's check visitor services. Throw it now. Huh. Um. My information. I thought. I thought there was a link somewhere where they could get to the membership directory, but I guess, see, the, if I'm a user mm -hmm. or a member, mm -hmm. and I'm coming to the site and I want to look for a membership directory, I'm not going to know automatically that I need to go to the user or the member module and, you know, look at, do a search. Correct. So, there's, it's not, it's not a necessarily highly intuitive of where you find that. If I were not on the board and didn't have any knowledge about this, mm -hmm. I'd be going to the website thinking, okay, there's got to be a membership directory somewhere. Where do I find it? I would recommend that you add the link to that in your navigation so that they can just go to it directly. Okay. Oh. And how do we... I would do that. How do you edit your navigation? You would go yeah, to the... I haven't been in that at all. Go back to the Tenancy Console and click on the link that says Edit Navigation. 
And that's going to allow you to edit the nav. Um, looks like you guys have two. You have this guy, and then you have this guy. So let me calendar of events, visitor services. That looks like this guy. Um, this nav dash H is probably this guy across the board about our chapter. So depending on where you wanted to add it, if you wanted to add it to the green, you would click on this guy and then you would just give it a link. Um, uh, let's call it member directory. And then of course you would need to know what the link was. So I'm going to go over here, go to memberships, click on search. And then I would just copy everything that's after the dot org. Um, and then paste it in here. You have the option to open a new window or open the same window. I'm just going to leave it as the same. Click on add. So now I've added this item here. I can come on. Drag it down to here. Um, and it'll, it'll appear as an option under member services. So let me go ahead and publish that. need to, oopsies, Mem oh. there it is, so now it's here. And so you click on that and it takes you to the search field? or mm -hmm. it, yeah. it takes us to this page and of course I'm oh, logged okay. in as admin over here so it gives me all that other info. If I go back to this guy and refresh, member services, member directory, it's going to just take me to here. Okay. But if you weren't a member, then it would be... If, if, if I'm not a member, uh, let me take out the... So then I go back to this guy, go over here, click this guy again, it doesn't show me anything, so I don't have permission to view the other members. Okay. Very interesting. Um, is there any way for a message to be added, so if they're not a member they get a, a message that says only members can view this information? I think so. I think we have another client that does that. Let's go over here. Uh, I'm looking in the settings for the membership module. And to see. I'm not sure. I would have to look. I think we do have a, another client that does that, but I need to, I'll need to research it because it's not popping up. Let me make a note of it. Okay. What other questions? Okay, so renewal period. I'm trying to make notes of the changes we made so I can let uh, Carol know. Mm-hmm. 60 days, but the grace is still 15. Mm -hmm. And that means no member benefit past 15. Okay. Okay, um, I sent you, I resent you the uh, document with okay. the fields that were hidden and there were a couple of fields where I had comments and um, I indicated there was one I think I wanted and the other two were not okay. needed. Yeah. So S and V I would have hid but I had comments so I wanted you to be able to see them. Okay. And then I wanted to know if in column Q we might be able to put in the event name. Okay. So okay. that when I run the report I don't have to look up the event codes. Got it. Um, and that event name 
we don't like so if it was a calendar event registration then the event title makes sense what if it is a membership uh, application do you just want it to say membership application or what do you want it to say because right now it gives you the membership application ID of the person the ID of the person the membership application ID for that person and each person is going to have a unique membership application ID I see. Um, yeah, I, I just need to know if it's membership. I, I'd like to know if it's the type, like student membership, renewal membership. Because mm. those are different prices, right? Mm hmm But I would think I could tell from By the price the, paid, but what if yeah. there's an adjustment? So that's, yeah. I kind of need to know okay. what they clicked on. And and then for catalog items, those have names. So like catalog six, I think is the um, the product or oh, whatever the know. service it's, or the product or we do right, also whatever the service or the product is. Yeah, we do also have the in the catalogs module itself. There are some additional uh, reports in that specific module. Go to catalogs and click on reports, and then what does export do? There are some reports, and let me we these reports were made for another client. Let me see if I have some examples of what that report looks like, and we can take a look. Let's see. I would prefer to have it all in one report so I don't have to run multiple reports to get all the data. Understood. Um, they needed some custom information, so we did make this report for them. just want to see what it says. Okay. So... Because they, they, this particular client, they sell products. Oh, okay. So it gives the name of the product, what was sold, uh, the number, of the balance, tags. Yeah. Date of order. So there's there's this information too, so I don't know if that's useful to you or not, but there is that option. Um, but for the main accounting transaction export, um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell programming that you would like for a column to be added to put the title, like if it's a calendar event, the event title, if it's a membership application, um, maybe put the membership type if it's a catalog item to put the catalog name mm -hmm. um, so that it'll, it'll just be in that one column yes that and if you helpful. yeah and if you wanted to use that other catalog export which details what was sold and all that stuff you still have that option too you could always go there to do that um, okay what else Ed are you still on the line yes did you have any questions <laughs> um, I, uh, not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> it's all a little. Uh, it's a little much when you don't know how to navigate the website, right? <laughs> right, right. Do you have a login, Ed? Uh, yes, I, I have a user ID for the website. Okay. It's not an admin login. Okay. Okay. And we can, as an admin, we can assign him admin privileges, though, correct? Yes. All you have to do is go to the user record, edit it, and then scroll down to where it says administrator information and change the security level uh, to global admin. What's the difference between a developer and a global admin? At Shipple, we have uh, developer access, and 
Right now, the only difference is we have access to some additional site settings um, that just change the configurations. So, for example, uh, I'm trying to see, like this would be an example of a, a site setting that we have access to that a, a global admin wouldn't, uh, whether tendency is <laughs> enabled or not. Uh, yes or no? Obviously, we would no. want yes. Go ahead. I just looked up um, Ed's user, mm -hmm. and it looks it, there's an admin section. So I think that's me, though. How do how can I tell what his settings are? How did you look it up? Did you go here and search name? To use users, yeah. So he's already set up as an admin. And because it says administrator there, correct. How do you? How, okay, because I wasn't sure if that was coming up because I'm an administrator or because he was. No, 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 no. It'll only show up for folks that are admin. So, like, if you do a search to see everybody, the only people that are going to show up with admin are the people that are truly admins. You can click on reports here, and it'll show you. Go down to K security level. And it'll show you a list of all the admins, and these are all the admins on the site. So. Oh, and there he is. See, you have administrator rights, Ed. Yeah, I see that. I don't know how I got them, but I see that. <laughs> ha, it's like magic. I think Carol may have set you up with it because sure. I asked her about it. Um, maybe she wanted to wait to let you know until we got a little training or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep so. an eye keep an eye on him, Tina, because he has admin access and he doesn't really know <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, we're on a we're on the honor system here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, I hope that this has been helpful, and definitely go back and look at the email that I sent you because it does have all the help files with step by step instructions of everything that we talked about, and I'm going to take this. Uh, Excel sheet that you sent me and would take you to programming and have them take a look at it and make sure that they can do exactly what you want them to do and then they'll add it to their queue and I I, I don't know how long it's going to take them to come up with the report but I will let you know hopefully it'll be one or two weeks not one or two months okay um, what other questions I think that's it for the moment okay any, any questions, Ed? Uh, not right now. Okay. Well, you know how to get in touch with me if you do have additional questions. And um, let me go check some things, and I'll email you, hopefully, by the end of today. Ed, I might recommend that you do a little exploring, not actually changing anything on the site, but just mm -hmm. seeing if you can navigate and sure. find stuff and, you know, search for things and... Um, and also take a look at the help files on the, the tendency yeah. um, or shipple page, and yes. that that might you know help prepare you for when we do some actual training. Yes. Now, now that I know I have the rights and all that, yes, I can go in there and do that. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. I appreciate your time. I did. Yeah. Um, I did start a little late, but I did record this, so I can. Um, I guess I can send you the, the, the video. Okay. Um, I forgot to start it when we first started, but I started it right before we started looking at stuff. So um, I'll, it takes a while to convert that, so I'll convert it and, and, and send it over, send you a link to where you can see it. Okay, very good. All right, thanks, y'all.